Hello, good afternoon everyone. I am Dr. Nupur from Kohinoor Hospital and here we are today for a live session. We are discussing about a very common topic nowadays and we are discussing about obesity. It's chronic effect on health and does it really cause cancer? So to discuss such an important topic with us, we have with us Dr. Bismanath Gauda. So let me tell you something about sir. So Dr. Bismanath Gauda is a well-trained advanced laparoscopic GI and HPV surgeon. He did his medical schooling from Topiwala National Medical College and BYL Nair Charitable Hospital and then completed surgical residency DMB surgery from PD Hinduja Hospital from Mumbai. He did his fellowship in hepatobiliary and liver transplant surgery at Medanta Institute of Liver Transplantation and Regenerative Medicine. He has two fellowships in advanced laparoscopic surgery from Scripps Clinic, California, USA and from Institute of Laparoscopic Surgery with Dr. J. L. Duluc Bordeaux, France. He is one of the few surgeons in India to have accomplished international fellowship in laparoscopic hepatobiliary pancreatic surgery with Dr. Bryce Gant in Paris. Being a master's in public health from Tulane University, USA, he is very passionate about clinical research and academic activities. He has several papers published both in national and international journals and has given presentation in various scientific forums worldwide. His research interests include treatment options for morbidly obese patients, treatment modalities for liver and pancreatic cancer, improving laparoscopic access for liver surgery and providing minimal access gastrointestinal surgery for weaker sections of the society. So with all these qualifications, sir, uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Let me tell you, that is the best introduction I've heard in my life. Thank you, Dr. Nupur. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate your kind words. So let's start with our Q&A. So basically, a very common question that you must be getting. What is obesity and how do you categorize it? Yeah, that's a, I think that's uh, something very commonly um, asked questions. People say, what is obesity? See, if you, if you look at it uh, in our Indian culture, if you go 30 years back in life, anyone who is a little bit plum in the family or in the society, you would say, ye khate pite ghar ka. you would say, it's from a good, well-to-do family. But now we know it is not good for the health. So why we talk about obesity? Because obesity is a health risk, which we call it's a epidemic in our country. Mm -hmm. We may think India is a poor country or a developing nation's growing economy. Maybe there are people who don't have enough to eat, but we have a set of class who have too much to eat and too much odd food to eat. Maybe fast food nation is cashing up in our country and they're becoming obese. So obese we classify on the weight. So anyone who is, we take suppose a person with 100 kilo of weight, we see the height, how tall he is, whether he's 4 feet high or 5 feet high and we calculate a formula called BMI, body mass index, which takes care of your height in kilometers, height in meters and your weight in kilograms and we come to a number. So if your BMI for your age mm -hmm. is 27.5 or more, then you are overweight or obese. If your BMI is less than 27, but in between 25 to 27, then you are overweight. So I think now people should look about their height and also take their weight and find an BMI what it is. So sir, this, uh, this discussion gets me to the point, does obesity cause cancer? Uh, to answer this question, we have enough data. We know that it does ca cause cancer very much for sure. Because two years ago, a paper in US in published in Lancet which shows patients who are overweight or obese have a higher chance of risk of cancer. Mm -hmm. And which cancers? The cancer of the breast, ovary, thyroid, colon cancer and many other cancer which is much more common in people who are overweight or obese as compared to someone who is on the normal weight. So now we know that overweight or being obese is a risk factor. It's a modifiable risk factor like smoking. Now we know smoking causes cancer. And now we also know obesity also causes cancer, which can be reduced by weight loss. Okay. So your chance of having a cancer can be eliminated if you lose your weight. Okay, so that gets me to one more interesting point. We know a yeah. lot of females right now are suffering from PCOD. So sir, is there any link between obesity and PCOD? Yeah, we also see, I also see a lot of patients in the city of Mumbai where, especially the working class women uh, and also the school, not school, but the college kids who are having a lot of uh, high incidence of PCOD in our population. So in PCOD, it's of 
two two different parameters a thin pcod or a obese pcod and most of the time we have seen a a girl who is pcod with weight issues means she is either overweight or obese if they can bring the weight down either through diet exercise or many times they undergo surgery for weight loss we see the pcod getting normalized and we have also seen patients with pcod and weight issues with surgery getting normalized and going ahead to having a full family so pcod gets reverses with weight loss you can try with medical weight loss if not surgical weight loss is also an option Okay, now yeah. that you have mentioned surgical weight loss, so what exactly is surgical weight loss? Is it like very expensive surgery that the patient has to undergo? Can you give us a gist about it? Yeah, surgical weight loss uh, has got different names. Many people understand surgical weight loss as bariatric surgery, metabolic surgery, or weight loss surgery. So these are different names, but it's the same. Um, Uh, procedures mm-hmm. and it is a surgery so surgery means you have to come into the hospital you have to undergo the surgery and you have to stay in the hospital so it comes at a cost it's not cheap at the same time in india in our nation weight loss surgery or bariatric surgery is still not considered covered by insurance unless you have a corporate policy so you have to pay out of pocket so when you pay out of pocket any surgical procedure comes on an average about 2 to 3 lakhs so it becomes an expensive as compared to removing your gallbladder appendix your insurance covers it you find it's okay so those are the different types of surgery and it is expensive because it's a surgical procedure and we do it laparoscopically so we don't make a big cut we make small tiny tiny holes mm-hmm. which through which the instruments go and we see it on the tv screen the surgery and we operate so that's uh, weight loss surgery and weight loss surgery are on an average 3 to 4 different types depending upon which surgery will suit the patient so, so we categorize into who will get the best benefit out of this procedure so that brings me to the point so is this weight loss surgery only uh, you know reserved for the affluent class of people or the people who are actually suffering or they are from lower class but they require a surgery so what are your comments on those sir uh coming back to the same question we said in the olden days jo bhi khate peete ghar ka hai looks plump so affluent class we know they can get the surgery done because for them cost is not a limitation mm-hmm. and in my practice the affluent class comes get the surgery done they go back to the society they will never tell also ki okay, i want to went a surgery because the acceptance rate is still not on the higher side as in the western population the unaffording class or the poorer class of this section who are also obese and overweight and who need a weight loss surgery but because of cost issues they don't come to us because in their mindset it is ki it's a expensive surgery and it's only for the rich or the affluent it's not for us so that's where the dilemma is but we are able to do even on the non affording patients we are able to do raise funds we are this crowd platforms where you can raise funds and some of my patients have been benefited from there where we raise funds for the surgery and the benefit so and i think this talk should also serve as a awareness ki if you don't have the funds it's not an issue there are a lot of people in the world who are there to help you monetarily financially but you come to us you come so, us consultation and we can take you through the surgery so that you at least your health improves in the lifetime exactly so you can understand how important it yeah, is to yeah. look at the issue at the right time be it affluent or something we need to address yeah. it that is what the point is like you come to us you know we have we have different resources how to raise funds we can manage in some exactly. way or the other exactly. but don't let your health go out of hand exactly. you know exactly we should yeah. wait we should take the right step at the right time rather than right. waiting right so what are the risks of the surgery sir is there any particular risk that a uh, patient has to be aware of regarding the surgery absolutely absolutely any, any risk uh, means any surgery is has risk but we still do operate why because the benefit should be more than the risk so what do you call a risk benefit uh, analysis so in weight loss surgery all these patients are sick patients sick patients when they are overweight obese they have diabetes blood pressure they have breathing issues they have knee pains their heart is not so well they have water retention so all these parameters make them a high risk patient so we have to optimize them means make sure they have been seen by everyone they are in a condition where they can undergo the surgery mm-hmm. and you do it as surgery where it's a right setup where you have a team of intensivist icu you have your cardiologist your physician your endocrinologist your chest physician everyone so it's a team work so make sure you have your team your team is right and the hospital is right where you have all the setup so if something you need 
it's there. You don't have to ship the patient outside somewhere. So that should be one thing. And you always tell the patient of all the risk and the safety. So risk in weight loss surgery, the first four weeks is very critical. I tell my patients, if you're ready to follow what we say to look out for the signs, uh -huh. then only I'll operate. The risk is you can bleed, you can vomit blood, so don't get scary. You can have infection because most of them are overweight. So a lot of fat, you can get infection. You can get some breathing problems, pneumonias. Mm -hmm. So all these things are the risk of doing a weight loss surgery because they are risky patients. Yes. You can be in the ICU for two, three days after the surgery, you know. True, sir. So all the risk is there. Bleeding is there, infection is there, some leak can happen because when we are stitching bowel to bowel or stomach to intestine, yes. it can happen. So those risks you have to understand. So most certainly sir, so if your hospital is well equipped to address all these issues, we can still go ahead because yeah. this uh, side effects are I think related to right. all the surgeries. Right. But you have a good team to take care of you, you can definitely still go ahead with the same yeah. stuff. That's so I would say any, any obese patients or obese uh, weight or patient who are struggling with weight, you ask the relevant questions to your treating doctor, surgeon, like how good is your hospital? Or you ask them, what is your infection rate in the hospital? Or you ask of all the surgeries, what is the chances of complication? Yeah. So that the patient should get confidence in operating, you know, and you should get your answers before you undergo the surgery. It should not happen that you got it operated at some setup and then you're repenting, why did I do it? Most you know, certainly. so every patient should be aware of their own rights. Sir, so can we come to the point, what are the side effects post the surgery? Would the patient have any side effects later on that he might experience because of the surgery? That's an interesting question again, Dr. Mm -hmm. Nupur. Because many, I do other different surgeries also. Like suppose I remove a gallbladder or an appendix or a colon cancer. The patient doesn't ask me, sir, is the side effects care? Mm -hmm. Why? So I ask myself, the other surgery patients, they don't ask me what are the side effects. Right. But when I operate for weight loss, the first question they ask, what is the side effects? Why is that? So I, I wanted to answer the question first myself. Yeah. Because there's a lot of media, there's a lot of news press, there's a lot of Google news, which talks about side effects of weight loss surgery. And that is, that is to some extent, it is some sense, but it's not sense at all. Because after the weight loss, people gain more energy. Mm -hmm. They become more energetic. They are able to walk around, they are able to do activities which we are not able to do it before. So we have a lot of good effects. But I don't know why people talk about side effects. Side effects are there because when you lose weight, suppose you are 100 kilos and you have lost 40 kilos, your skin may sag a little bit. If you have a lot of weight around your neck, your neck will look a bit droopy sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have done a bypass surgery, when you have bypass a segment of the intestine, then you can have uh, what do you call low vitamins low protein levels if you're not taking enough proteins. So those are some of the side effects which we look out for in the follow up period. Okay, so that's what tells us about the side effects of the surgery and we right. certainly don't have to worry about it because doctor is here to address you for that. So that brings me, what does diet, when does the diet and the exercise work for a weight loss? Like how does it work and when does it fail? Like when should we stop focusing on that and you recommend okay now this is the right time you can have a surgery or the patient can just go ahead with a workout and a diet. I think when you are, uh, when you have run out of money by paying the dietitian every time, then you come back to us. No, the questions <laughs> apart. The thing is that uh, you see, you, as I said, BMI, you calculate what is your BMI and based on that you will come to a number, what is your excess body weight. Suppose your height, your God given height is 5 feet and you should be about uh, 55 kilos mm -hmm. but in reality you are 90 kilos. So you are that extra weight. Yeah. So if your extra weight is 10-15 kilos, you can do diet and exercise. But if your extra weight is 40 kilos, 50 kilos. Diet and exercise is not going to help you. You may be able to lose 5-10 kilos, mm -hmm. but how long are you going to diet? That's the question which we should ask yourself. Are you going to diet for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. And is dieting for the rest of your life easier? You may do it for one month, you'll do it for two months. You may like the dietitian, you may do it for six months. After that, you'll fall back. And what happens when you fall back from a post dietitian? You bounce back. Mm -hmm. If you have lost 10 kilos, you'll come back 15 kilos more. So. The real test of time is you find out what is the excess weight you are carrying. Mm -hmm. Are you carrying 10-15 kilos? Then I would say yeah, start with diet and exercise. See what is your motivation level, what is your honesty level, can you keep up to it? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, you are pulling down, then continue it. Mm -hmm. 
But if you are 30 kilos, 40 kilos overweight, excess weight, I don't think diet and exercise will help you. Okay. Also, I am very cautious about people who are uh, 50 kilos overweight, like going and hitting the gym, if they go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Chances that they might have some trauma right. or some injury is more high because they are not… Issues, yeah. yeah. So, if you are that 40, 50 kilos overweight, I would, I would be very cautious asking them to go to the gym un unless it's been totally supervised. So that uh, I'm having a little bit of like you know question for that. Mm -hmm. Does the weight loss surgery have any effect on the hormonal change or is there any hormonal change that a person will observe in himself post the surgery since you're doing a big surgery like that. So mm -hmm. it might have some effect right? Right right it does it does. That's why it is also called metabolic surgery mm -hmm. because it alters the metabolism in the body itself like how we eat how the fluid or food proteins, carbohydrate, fat gets absorbed, the alteration happens. So with the nutrient absorption getting difficult or different after the surgery, your hormone level also changes to the better way. Now look at diabetes. You know diabetes when we do this weight loss surgery, people who diabetes is you know have to take two or three drugs, oral tablets plus insulin. We know after the surgery their sugars come back to almost as compared to normal people. Why is that? Because there's a lot of hormonal changes which happens inside the body after the surgery. So they may not need that many drugs, that many insulin because once the weight comes down, the hormone levels also normalizes and your sugars gets better. So there's a lot of uh, hormone balances happens inside. There's GLP-1, ghrelin, there are many scientific hormones which I think it will be out of realm right now, but it does happen. So, so what is like you know there are many comorbidities that are associated with obesity can right. you give us a little gist like how uh, comorbidities affect the obesity or how does obesity affect the comorbidities hmm. like hypertension and diabetes yeah yeah, yeah. so obesity causes a lot of comorbidities like we can the whole system is affected like if you go from the top you have migraine pseudotumor cerebri hypertension you come on the heart you have cardiomyopathy because of obesity Heart attacks are more common, people who are obese, diabetes, blood pressure, knee problems, people can't be able to sleep, what we call sleep apnea or obstructive sleep pattern, OSA which we call, PCOD in women, then we have um, cancers which we now know, obesity causes different types of cancers. So there's multiple effects, there's not a single organ in the body which is not affected by obesity because what happens, the fat cells get deposited all around, around your heart, around your liver fatty liver which is common now, fatty liver, your um, reproductive organs, so PCOD and all those things, it's all across. Okay, so basically… So what we see outside, yeah. it's just a part of it, more problem is inside, exactly. inside the body and that causes a lot of health issues. So you can describe obesity as a parasite that will eat away all the other organs or… It, it just goes everywhere, yes, exactly. your fat, it just goes in all the organs, you know, your, every organ is invaded by fat. Exactly. And then you wonder what do I do? Which which one to tackle first? Exactly. So you have to tackle your weight first. Exactly. So that can be one of the things that we can take it from here that you should tackle your obesity. Let's not take it lightly. No, because no, no, no. It's no. not something that is just a question of oh, is, am I looking morbidly obese? But it is going to affect your other health also. That as doctor emphasized, it's affecting all the organs. It is not just like the physical appearance. It is the organs that are also getting affected. So let's keep and that that's aside. that's more serious pattern because the mo the time you realize that your organs are affected, you may have missed the boat. Yeah. You know, you may have the people who have already had a heart attack and then they come for a weight loss surgery. Mm -hmm. So don't wait till your boat starts sinking. You know, like yes. come get get used to the idea of losing weight for long term. Mm -hmm. Don't look for short term effects. So sir, that uh, questions that arise to me is like, uh, who are good candidates? Like you said, okay, these patients are good for surgically managed weight loss, mm -hmm. but who can be the best candidates for medically uh, lose of weight loss or something like that? You have options for that as well. Sir. Yeah, see, uh, again, you have to see what is the BMI, BMI, what is the excess weight. Also, someone who is 10, 15, 20 kilos, I would say, I would first put them on a weight loss diet with my dietitian and my exercise physiologist and we do a psych psych evaluation to see whether they are having depression, any mood disorders, any eating pattern behaviors. So you you have to look the patient as a global key. It's just weight or the other parameters which need some medical treatment. So those are the good ones. And the other uh, patients who are not fit for surgery, 
because of a weak heart or the lungs are not good that they cannot withstand a surgery so those patients will not think of doing any surgery then maybe we can think of weight loss and exercise okay. so your category should be clear don't operate someone is who's you know who is not going to withstand the surgery then let them let him be weight loss program diets and program at least he or she will sustain because it should not hasten your you know I think the best option will be meeting a doctor and deciding, discussing with them rather than you know we taking going to Google and typing our words saying, oh this is what you have to do. Let's not just go to the expert and find out am I the right candidate. I mean it won't harm you because it will going to benefit you for the long term yourself. So right, right, right. That is right, one right. message we can get from here as well. So sir, what is the success rate of the weight loss surgery? Success rate is is how you identify your patients. Like if you are doing for the right. patient with the right indication your success rate is definitely going to be better if your indication is not right and you are just doing it on a 5 10 kilos or 15 kilos of weight maybe you will not get the best best success so my criteria or what we follow is make sure your bmi is on the right track they have comorbidities like diabetes blood pressure so that they get better with that and then they'll feel not only the weight loss but their overall comorbidity improves so when you do the right surgery for the right patient your success rate is almost 90 95% okay. it is that's such a brilliant uh, way to wind this up and we will go to the last question so sir it's a very common question like yeah. everyone wants everyone wants a pill for a weight loss is there any pill that can cause weight loss okay i think i think the day i discover a pill i won't be sitting here <laughs> <laughs> no the thing is that that's uh, most of the patient or all the patient they ask because the moment you tell surgery they get scared No, no, no. Surgery, no. So they want, sir, doctor, sir. Uh, do we have some drugs? Have some tablets? That we have drugs and our weight loss will be reduced. Irony is that we don't have such tablets. But the day it's discovered, the whoever is discovered will be a multi-billionaire overnight. <laughs> but uh, I think we have come with a small uh, pill-type balloon, which we can swallow it. It stays in the stomach for about four months. It's called ellipse. Okay. So it's still not uh, there in India, but it's there in the uh, European countries. It'll get FDA approved. So it's like a small tablet. You can swallow it. Then the tablet grows like a balloon inside your stomach. Okay. Then it stays in your stomach for a matter of four weeks, uh, four months. Then it collapses and comes out. So in that you can lose about ten kilos of weight. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's a small pill which is going to come in the market. Yeah. I think the research is still going on that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I think we had a very good session right now. We got to know in just like what is exactly obesity, how much effect does it have on you and your lifestyle, and indirectly how obesity can cause a lot of effects in your body. So we were so oblivious. Okay, it's just a physical appearance. It is not. As sir enlightened us, it does affect the whole body. It affects you mentally, physically, and also it's eating away the other organs. So I think it's the right time if you're facing any issues regarding obesity. get the expert's opinion let the doctor get involved don't take it as okay i'll go on google search it no get the expert come to us <laughs> this 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 <laughs> okay <laughs> get the opinion get the, get your uh, question sorted off and i think doctor will be here to serve you yeah very good thank you so much thank sir you. Thank, thank you for guiding us through this topic thank you thank you